What's up, everybody? Time to kick your weekend off right. It's Friday, high noon. You're listening to the Entrepreneurial Web. I'm your host, Jeremiah Fox. I have been on a fitness kick for years, probably like, oh, there's been an emphasis on fitness, especially during COVID, because it's a huge part of what is going to be human recovery. And we're going to continue on that kick today. Before I bring on my first guest, I'm going to give you the message of the week. As many of you know, I have trained martial arts and taught martial arts for several years. And one of the constant messages that was shared and uttered in the martial arts school that I uh, train and teach at Sun Dojo is that the training is 75% mental, 25% physical, which is an odd scenario, right? Martial arts is always a metaphor for life. That's always the way I've understood it. What you see on the surface level is a bunch of people working their asses off, sweating very hard. It looks like, wow, that's very physical. Like that whole training is physical. Imagine that's only a quarter of it. The way a wave crests, you see only half of it. The depth of what fitness and martial arts can offer you upstairs in the noggin could be three times that. And you just don't see it. It's one of the added benefits that I got from martial arts training. I just thought I was going to come in and learn self-defense and get stronger and get faster. And this whole other thing was offered to me. And it has helped me remarkably. I've said many times I would have burned my brick and mortar places to the ground a hundred times over if I would not have had martial arts training and gained that mental fortitude. With that, I would like to introduce my first guest. We're zooming in to DC in the Northern Virginia area. His name is Nick Lozano. He is a veteran podcast host and producer. He is also a technology consultant. Welcome to the show, Nick. How you doing, Jeremiah? Awesome. What's going on? Nothing much, you know, just uh, trying to survive in this uh, current world we live in. Like I'm sure everybody else, you switching from being out in the city, working downtown to working at home and trying to, you know, balance that mix with uh, family time and work-life integration, I guess, as you say. Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's going to be the focus of today's show for sure. And and Nick here uh, is also a jujitsu practitioner. He's been training for about five years as well in the Northern Virginia, D.C. area. And, and that's really what it's all about, right? It's about survival. It's about staying in the game so that you can party one more day, right? <laughs> whether, whether it's jujitsu or, uh, or business. Uh, why don't you give everybody a little bit of, a, of your, your business? We'll get to, the, to, to jujitsu and, sure. and training a little later, but your, your business background, uh, you know, where, you, where you studied, what you studied, kind of like, give us your resume. We're, I've got a couple scouts on there. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my business background, um, initially I worked in uh, the restaurant industry, you know, as a professional chef for probably about eight years. Um, so that went well. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, yeah, I got tired of working every single weekend and every single evening, which I'm sure you know. Yeah, um, yeah. Just tried to decided to do something different. You know, I always had this interest in technology. Um, I'm probably the only kid who was eight years old reading the Windows 3.1 manual. Um, <laughs> I don't know many kids who actually do that. Um, so then in college, you know, I just shifted over to technology. Uh, what I really love about technology is it's just this ability to constantly be learning. Um, it's it's changing at such a rapid pace that you always have to be learning. And that's what really drew me towards it. Um, so my day job, I run technology for um, an insurance trade association here in D.C. I also have my own uh, technology consulting company where I help small to medium sized businesses, you know, get their infrastructure up to uh, par, maybe bring it up to that next level. And then, like you said, I'm also a podcast, podcast, podcast host. Are you <laughs> um, nervous? No, I am not nervous. <laughs> For some reason, I just cannot talk this morning. I don't know why. <laughs> I, it happens to me, too. I'm just like so comfortable and like my tongue is just like, whoa, 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 like mush mouth. Yeah. I think, you know, it's that it's that my mind is going faster than my mouth is. Yeah. Yeah. Ripping over the words. Yep. I get that a lot. Uh, give us a little background on your podcast history because you you ran and produced a uh, podcast for other companies prior to hosting your own, correct? Yeah, correct. So I initially got into podcasting, just running it for my day job. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they were just doing little sound bites every now and then during meetings. And probably about 2014 or 2015, we decided that, you know, hey, everyone's doing a podcast. Um, Joe Rogan's getting humongous, yeah. um, you know, and he's even bigger now than he was then. So they're just like, hey, you know, you did some kind of music before. 
uh, can you just put this thing together? And it, it's just me being a technologist and my inherently curious nature. I'm like, I can probably figure out how to do that. I mean, what's what's hard about plugging a microphone into a mixer and and recording it? Uh, so that's where I kind of got my start. And my podcast is called Lead.exe, and we explore leadership from a technology leader's perspective. Uh, what I find in my time talking with technology leaders is they spend a lot of time working on, we'll call them your hard skills, right? Your technical skills. They learn mm. what the new AWS is, what the new computer language is, you know, what the new security measures are, but they don't spend as much time talking about the soft skills, or I like to call them essential skills, which is like your emotional intelligence, your self-awareness, um, you know, your servant leadership. So we try to bring topics like that to the forefront for them to expose them to new and different ideas. And you have a co-host on that show as well, correct? I do. Uh, I, I share the uh, hosting responsibilities with my co-host, Brian Comerford. Um, you know, he's based in Denver, Colorado, and we do it just the same way here. We're, we're, we sit down on oh, Zoom wow. and we bring guests in and we do everything remotely. And what I really love about podcasting is it's really brought my network forward. And I'm able to talk to people that I normally wouldn't get access to. The, the joke I always like to give to people, it's like, hey, can I pick your brain and buy you coffee? And people don't reply to you. But it's like, hey, you want to be a guest <laughs> on my podcast? They're like, sure. And they reply instantly, <laughs> right? Which which I'm sure you have found the same situations. Yeah, absolutely. It's strange. And it's funny. Are, are you familiar with Gary Vaynerchuk? Yes, I am. Yeah. yeah. So that that's that's kind of where the, the idea first got planted in my head. Um, you know, running brick and mortar businesses, it wasn't so hard to get like, I would just invite people to my restaurant, you know, I'd be like, come in and let me buy you, a, you know, a drink or a meal. And it's, it's kind of a fancy place. So they were like, Oh, yeah, that's not a problem. But, but like, to expand that reach, you know, he was talking about that, whatever, it was like a year and a half ago, when I, when I first kind of like reacclimated myself with him. Um, and, and I was like, that's a good idea. I'll try that. And it totally works. Like 100%. <laughs> people are like, who doesn't want to be in the spotlight, you know? Yeah, I know. And it's, it's great that you bring up Gary V because initially when I first saw him, he just put me off. I mean, Oh yeah. He was like brash and he's like cursing Uh, and Gary V. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, he, he is, he has that certain type of personality that can rub people the wrong way. And initially I, I, you know, I, I tuned him out because he was just way too much over the top. And I thought he was just trying to get people to listen to him. But as more as I saw him on LinkedIn and, you know, as well as I know, the internet follows you around. So instantly I watched one of his videos and then, you know, Facebook and Google start recommending everything to me (laughs) about him. And then I started listening to his message and and that's what kind of drove me further in getting into, I guess, this social media presence. I was doing my Mm. podcast and I was failing at what I feel like a lot of podcasters fail at is the promotional side, right? It's putting the podcast together, editing it, everything. That's the easy part, talking to exactly. guests. The hard part is actually making the media and producing it. You know, if you just build it, nobody's going to listen. I mean, you, yeah. you've got to drive people somehow. <laughs> and that's what really drove me to social media and, and Gary Vanderchuk. It's just, you know, you've got to at least toot your horn a little bit and get out yeah. there and say, hey, I've got this, you know, why don't you have a listen? And, you know, there is a dichotomy of balance to that. You can't, you know, do that 24 seven. People aren't mm. going to listen to you. But you need to be out there and at least doing that, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and it's true of all business. But I, I really learned a lot about it in, in this format. And it was the same for me. Um, where like, not, it's like getting to this point, you know, where we're sitting down and talking, I'm like, Oh, I can relax now. I'm just like doing all this work all week, like it's pre promotion for the upcoming show. And as soon as that show is done, I'm doing post promotion for it. And that phases right into the pre promotion for the next week especially like we're doing it every Friday. So we're constantly cranking them out. Um, it's funny, you talking about like your first introduction to Gary Vee. I first got into him in like 2007 when he was doing wine library. Because wine yeah. I was selling, I was working in the city. I was selling a gang of wine. And one of my friends was like, yo, you're going to love this guy. Just check him out. And like instantly I was like, this guy is amazing. And my wife was like, the sound of his voice hurts my ears. Like, <laughs> just, <laughs> and I would get home from work late too, because I was I was uh, working at some restaurants in the city. I'd get home like really late and I'd buy a bottle of wine on my way into work because I knew I wouldn't get one afterwards because I'd get out at like two o'clock in the morning sometimes. And I'd come home and I'd, I'd just turn him on and crack a bottle of wine and listen. And she'd be like, no, 
I can't take it. But then like, I didn't, that was like 2007, 2008. And then I just, we started opening businesses. And for, you know, a solid like 10 years, I was just hustling and not, no social media, no time for YouTube or Netflix or anything Mm -hmm. like that. And a friend of mine uh, sent me a Simon Sinek video. Are you familiar with him as well? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So they sent me the one, the the TED talk he did about, uh, you know, know your why and the three Mm -hmm. different levels and stuff. And it was really fascinating. I was like, wow, that's great. I watched the whole thing. It was the first time I'd sat down and watched a YouTube video in like, you know, in a long, (laughs) long time. We had just had our third child. So like, I kind of was like chilling with the baby a little bit. So I was like, I had some downtime. And then the feed was Gary Vaynerchuk. Like right after that Simon Sinek video, I was like, oh my God, it had been 10 years. I was like, what's this dude up to? And I clicked it and I was just like, what what has transpired here? What? And then, but in that video, that very video, he was like, you want to expand your your network and your web, you know, like start a podcast, invite them on. Like, who's going to say no? Like people love you know, a podcast. And then just a couple of months later, you know, Sam here, the, the executive producer at Talking Alternative Broadcast, he was like, hey, you want to host a show? Like, who? There we go. So ser- serendipity. And, and it's exactly the way you and I have mm-hmm. connected, right? Like same thing, get hard on social, get hard on LinkedIn. I start doing LinkedIn. I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing, but like, pa, 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 pa. And then I post a picture about jujitsu. You post a picture about jujitsu. Like, oh, you're a podcast host. Oh, I'm a podcast host. <laughs> and then, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, you know, we sail off into the sunset. It's really beautiful. <laughs> I think that's how we actually connected initially. Like, somebody mm-hmm. said, "What are you doing this weekend?" And you're like, "Oh, I do jujitsu every day." I was like, "Yeah, I wish I could do it every day." Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. But I, I wish right now I could do it every day. But I, I'm keeping up. I'm staying pretty. I'm staying pretty sharp. We'll get to that in the in the next uh, in the next portion. We got a couple minutes left here in our first one. Um, there was something else I wanted to ask you about. You mentioned uh, so social media. Your your main presence is on LinkedIn, correct? That is my main most presence, of your time. Yeah. Tell I us spend, a little bit about that and why. You have two. I minutes. spend I spend most of my time on LinkedIn because uh, initially I just wanted to drive traffic to my audience, right? Mm. Um, and for me, I'm looking for the technology professional. Um, and Not finding a them on C-level Facebook. director. <laughs> and those people are hard to find on Facebook. Yeah. And plus Facebook, I find is such a negative place, at least for me. I, I haven't really spent much time on it in general, but um, I'm there mostly because that's where the, the target market I, I'm looking for is. Mm. I'm slowly trying to expand and see if I can take you know what I have at LinkedIn and if I can transition some of that content and some of that format into other platforms. So I've been messing with Instagram. I've been messing with with Twitter um, and TikTok, which I still don't. I'm not really sure what to do there. Well, <laughs> um, it might be all for naught anyways. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. With all the news that's coming out, it might be gone. Maybe I have to figure yeah. out Triller. But I feel like once, you know, it's like the Gary Vanderchuk thing. He says, once you get that plate spinning mm-hmm. in one spot, then you can start looking at other places. And I feel like I'm at that place with LinkedIn. But so, yeah, I agree. And it's, I see it starting to happen for me too. Uh, it's been slow. And, and he says that a lot too. Like you have to have patience. It's not like the, the virality aspect of it. Like I find it pretty useless, but it's like, it's just like in a restaurant. You want to acquire like one new customer a day. A new person walks through the door. You want to retain them. You want to do something to mm-hmm. make them feel welcome and make them feel like coming back. And I feel like social media is the same way. So it's like, it's you're just scooping or whatever if you're playing yeah. chess or checkers, you know, just like <laughs> one guy at a time. You don't come in and like I got the whole board, you know? It's exactly. like I got this guy and, and then takes a little while and I got that guy. The great thing about social media is I've I've found at times that people are passive in you know consuming your content. They might not like it or comment on it, but you'll run into somebody. Oh, yeah. I, I've run into people I actually know because initially LinkedIn, I was connected to only people I knew. Mm-hmm. And they're like, hey, I really liked your piece of content on XYZ. And I was like, I didn't even know you looked at that. Right. No, same. <laughs> but, same. So, I, similar experience. I mean, the vanity metrics are there, but I always tell people don't don't rely yeah. on those. Um, you know, people are consuming your content. They're right. just not letting you know that they're doing it. Right. Cool. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in about one and a half minutes and we'll pick up with the jujitsu. Awesome, everybody. You're listening to the Entrepreneurial Web. Hang tight. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Do you 
run or are ready to open your own business? Hi, I'm Jeremiah Fox. I've been operating and opening small business for the last 25 years, and I'm the host of the new show, The Entrepreneurial Web. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern time for insights and stories on the nuances of running small business right here on Fridays at noon, talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Again, it's Friday, the 12 to 1 o'clock hour, time for the entrepreneurial web. Set yourself up for success. This week, first half of the show, we are zooming to DC, talking with Nick Lozano. He is a podcast host and producer, as well as a technology consultant. But not only that, he's a five-year uh, jiu-jitsu practitioner. Prior to that, spent some time in Muay Thai and striking arts. And we were just discussing, we went over his kind of his background in business. And for this portion here, we're going to talk about the application of fitness, in particular martial arts, on how to be a better person and how that will affect your, your business and your income ultimately. So Nick, a couple of things were said in that last segment that already, they really lent themselves towards it. Once we, we were talking about chess <laughs> in terms of social media and like, and, and jujitsu is known as, uh, as human chess. It's dynamic problem solving and it's, it's placement and it's strategy. Uh, really, really a mental, again, the, the, the training is mainly mental. And then the other thing that was said, you were talking about, um, your, your podcast with your, with your co-host mm -hmm. and, and the aspects of leadership that you're stressing and it's the soft skills. And it's the things that it's, it's, it's almost like the dichotomy in jujitsu where like, yeah, you come in and you learn techniques and you like, you learn to pass the guard, you learn to like grab the Kimura or set up the guillotine and all that. Like, that's great. But like, that's only, that's just like the surface level part of it. There's so many other aspects mentally and the things that you have to do, like your breathing is a huge portion of it. If you cannot control your breathing, it is unlikely you are going to be a successful jujitsu practitioner. And so when you said that, I just immediately, I went to, to jujitsu. I just started thinking about it immediately. <laughs> and that training, like if you're stuck under a guy that's bigger than you and stronger than you, um, especially if he's a lower rank than you and you're not, it's like hard to get out. You're not going to get out with your ego. You're not going to be like, oh, I learned this and da, 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 da. It's like, it's patience. It's breathing. It's looking for those opportunities. Um, so we kind of connected the dots already, which is great. So just say, well, our work is done. <laughs> Short show today, guys. No, have a great weekend. I'm kidding. Um, but so tell everybody a little bit about your, your, your history now with martial arts. Yeah. So, uh, I think my fascination with martial arts started just by seeing, uh, you know, Bruce Lee movies. Like I'm sure a lot of yep. us martial artists, it's, you, you just latch on and you, you see him and, you hear his philosophy because he was a philosophy major too. And he was just mm -hmm. kind of like the father of mixed martial arts. Um, and that always drove my interest into it. But growing up as, as a kid, I was always a team sport player. Mostly, you know, I played hockey when I was a kid and then I got out of school and I got big into running and I did running, but then I went to a striking art. Um, I initially went to go do judo. Um, so I was at this place when I was living in Florida and 
these guys were were just manhandling people and they were Olympic alternates on the USA judo team. And you just touch them and you can feel that energy. You know what I'm talking about? When, it, when you run into a good judo player and you can just feel the energy in their hands and I'm, you just go over the top instantly. Um, so then as I was leaving that class, that first one that I did, the Muay Thai guys were coming in. <laughs> and I was like, hey, let me give that a try. And instantly I wasn't being a thrown around. So I, I just kind of latched onto that. I really liked hitting the pads. Um, there was something about stress relief with that. And mm. it just being a really tough workout. It's a different kind of conditioning, you know, yeah. than running. It's that, you know, that fast twitch muscles, being able to work in short burst. And I did that for probably four or five years. And I competed on the local scene. It's not really amateur. It's like, you know, there's another uh, gym somewhere and they're like, Hey, we're getting together. You know, yeah. you guys want to do something. So it's nothing really formal. And this is before the UFC was huge. Um, so it was just kind of us going around. And then once I finished college and I left Florida, uh, I moved up to DC and I just got huge into triathlon for some reason. Uh, I, I don't know why there's just something about that mental, it's that same mental grit, you know, where you're just like, you force your body to do something. It, it tells you it wants to quit, but you, you, in your mind, tell it to shut up and to keep doing something. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and then after a while, I just got tired of that, you know, running and cycling. And I just wanted to get back into fi- having that community, that, that sense of community that you get with martial arts. So 100%. I was like, you know, yeah. I, I didn't really want to do any striking arts anymore after everything you see with head injuries coming out and all that. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know, I'm in my, at that time I was in my early thirties. I'm like, the last thing I need to do, be doing is getting hit in the head. Um, so I went and I did jujitsu um, and I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with the community, um, how helpful everybody is. Um, to me, the sense of community in that was a bit better than when I was in uh, Muay Thai where people are yeah. trying to hurt each other sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, not, not always, but if you're in that MMA gym where competition levels high, people start low with their strikes and they get a little bit harder and a little harder and a little harder. And before you know it, you're, you're having a, a Duke it out fest. Um, and then I just hit that jujitsu and I just fell in love with it, the community and everyone's on the same level. Um, you know, men and women train. We don't care about if you're a man, woman, child, uh, your sexual orientation. If you want to train, we want to train with you. And I just really fell in love with that mentality. Yeah, me too. Same thing. It's funny that you mentioned that about um, the difference between like a striking art versus jujitsu. I once asked my uh, professor about that because we we train and teach mm-hmm. Muay Thai, kickboxing, as well as jujitsu out of the martial arts school. And the retention rate for jujitsu was just like exponentially higher than <laughs> Muay Thai, you know, yeah. like pe- there were a couple people that yeah. really like stayed for like years in Muay Thai, but a lot of people, they come in and do six months and then they go off and they were doing yoga or something else. And I just asked him one day, I was like, what, what do you think? I mean, he'd be- he's been at it for a long time. Like, what do you think it is about jujitsu? And he's like, the, you know, he just said the, the, the level of commitment just to like work with somebody is so much greater in mm-hmm. jiu-jitsu than it is with anything else like with striking arts you're often at a distance you know you don't get as close mm-hmm. to i mean it's just it's hugs it's let's just like an hour <laughs> of hugs and yeah and you really you really get like super intimate with them and so it, it does foster i think this this culture uh that is just so much more committed to itself and each other than than some of the other some of the other striking arts so what are some of the things that that what are some of the takeaways that you got directly uh, you know i mentioned a couple of my own at the mm-hmm. beginning of the show that that you got from martial arts and fitness in general that it really just helped you you alluded to a little bit of it with the with the um you know with the triathlon training i was actually listening to a joe rogan podcast earlier this morning and i forget the name of the guest it was a female doctor and she was talking about like ultra agers and yeah. how if you push yourself like that physically, it enhances your brain capacity because it's that's slowly degenerating over time. But that's one of the things like pushing yourself um, through that physical confrontation internally really develops the, the mental capacity greatly. Can you uh, give us any testimonies <laughs> to that? <laughs> I think for me, what martial arts has really done for me is let me kind of embrace the suck, right? Mm. Like you might be in a stressful situation and jujitsu is a great thing. And you, you brought it up early, you know, that new white belt comes in and, um, you know, maybe he's overweight and he's got 150 pounds on you 
and you let him pass your guard and instantly he's on top of you and you're like, wait, I should not have done that yeah. because even though he doesn't know what he's doing, this is going to be very <laughs> difficult sucks. to get out of this. <laughs> you know, I'm not yeah. a very big guy myself. I'm only like 165 you know, pounds. So, you know, a, a 200 plusers on top of yeah. me is a difficult time. So it learns that state, you know, to stop and breathe for a second, realize that you're in a tough situation, but you can always work yourself out of it. As long as you take that second to collect yourself and realize that you're really not at the worst situation you could possibly be. You still have a chance. As long as you're still yeah. there, you're still breathing, you can still move. Um, you still have a chance. It's that being patient and, you know, embracing the stuff like, yeah, it's terrible now, but it, it's, it's not going to get any worse, right? The guy's already leaning on top of you. Yeah. And you can take that same mentality to business, especially right now with this economy. Like, what can we control right now? Well, we can't control COVID. We can't control other people wearing the mask. We can only control ourselves and our responses to, to those actions and realize that right now, yeah, we can't get together. But, you know, Zoom has been great. People have been connecting that way. People have been finding a way to do business online. Um, and especially from my day job, the technology leadership level, uh, people are finding it easier to get things bought into by senior leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's just this ability to kind of reframe your mind and realize the situations you might be in might be bad, but you can always work your way out and to a better situation. Yeah, it's been exactly the same for me. And I said it at the beginning of the show, if I wouldn't have had that constant training, and for me, like, the dojo is situated directly between two of my businesses, the two that I'm at the most, and they're full of headaches and I would have burned them to the ground if I wasn't <laughs> getting that. And there's also that, you know, that, that sense of like, whether you're hitting a heavy bag or you're wrestling with somebody, whatever was weighing on you heavy, where you're just like mentally, you're like, I can't work this out right now. You go into a one hour class and you come out and like, it's all still there, but you're yes. just, you're just like, <laughs> look at the birds. I feel so good right now. You know, you're like, I got this man. And, and then you reassess that, you know, you, you, you reinteract with that particular situation and it is it's just completely different, uh, bifocals, you know, and it, and it just changes the whole, the, the view of the world. I feel that was, that was always the thing it did and for it, me. It does. Jiu-Jitsu to me always goes on to one of these things that I always give as a leadership principle to do hard things and do them together to mm -hmm. build a solid team. And when you do jujitsu, everyone who's committed, you know, long-term, not people who yeah. come in for a week and then leave, but everyone right. who's committed right. term has been to battle with each other, right? Yes. You've lost to this person. You've won to that person. You're sweating on the mats and all that hard work, doing those hard things together just builds a bond with people. Mm -hmm. Everyone who's been in the same gym for a long time, you're almost like family, yeah. And I always tell people, take those same kind of principles that you learn on the mats or in your martial arts and bring them to business. Pick the hardest project you can do. And it doesn't matter if you complete it or not. It's doing those hard things together um, that help build a bond with the team. Absolutely. That's it, man. Awesome. Very, very great insights. Thank you. So we're going to have to wrap up this portion of the show. I'd like to thank you for coming on. Uh, really, really awesome stuff, man. I couldn't have. You, you said it much better than I would have. <laughs> so much better. So thank you for that. Where can people find out about you if they're trying to get in touch with you, interested in your podcast, your services, or just talking about jujitsu? Sure. So the easiest place to find me personally on social media is LinkedIn. Uh, it's just hit that LinkedIn forward slash IN forward slash N-I-C-K dash L-O-Z-A-N-O. You'll find me on there. My podcast is called lead.exe. Just looking at any uh, podcast catcher app, wherever you listen to them, you'll find them. Um, and like I said, I'm open on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter, uh, Nick L. Lozano. That's two L's. Um, just send me a message or anything. I'll be happy to talk to anybody about anything, martial arts, business, podcasting, whatever. Awesome, man. Well, thanks so much. I'll stay in touch with you, especially through LinkedIn and ED. <laughs> 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 I said, that's a joke from a previous show. I had a LinkedIn guest and it was just a funny thing. This, they had an accent and the way it came out was really funny. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll rehash that another time. But again, thank you for being on the show. I look forward to speaking to you soon. Everybody else, stay tuned. We're about to Zoom to Fargo, North Dakota. All right. We'll be back in just a few, everybody. You're listening to The Entrepreneurial Web. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network at www.talkingalternative.com. 
Now, broadcasting 24 hours a day. Talking Alternative. Do you run or are ready to open your own business? Hi, I'm Jeremiah Fox. I've been operating and opening small business for the last 25 years, and I'm the host of the new show, The Entrepreneurial Web. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern time for insights and stories on the nuances of running small business right here on Fridays at noon, talkradio.nyc. Do you love or are you intrigued about New York City and its neighborhoods? I'm Jeff Goodman, host of Rediscovering New York, a weekly show that showcases New York's history and its extraordinary neighborhoods. Every Tuesday live at 7 p.m., we focus on a particular neighborhood and explore its history, its vibe, its feel, and its energy. Tune in live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on talkradio.nyc. Hi, I'm Graham Dobbin. Join me every Thursday evening for the Mind Behind Leadership here on talkradio.nyc. We speak to people from business, sport, military and politics, all around what makes a great leader. The personal experiences of what's worked and, maybe more importantly, what hasn't worked. So, that's 7 o'clock every Thursday evening. The Mind Behind Leadership here on talkradio.nyc. Listen to real stories of real leaders. Talking Alternative Radio. 24 hours a day. Okay, everybody, welcome back once again. Friday, 12 to 1 is the entrepreneurial hour, the entrepreneurial web hour, the hour of the entrepreneurial web. <laughs> I'm making it up as I go along, I swear to God. I was listening to Joe Rogan today. He got me fired up thinking about comedy, but also just being silly. So if you're just tuning in, our last portion of the show, we were with Nick Lozano in Washington, D.C. He is a podcast host and producer, as well as a technology consultant, but he's also a Brazilian jiu-jitsu blue belt, and we were talking about the benefits and the components of jiu-jitsu and martial arts training and fitness that have helped improve your business savvy. Now, we are zooming in to Fargo, North Dakota, the North Dakota-Minnesota border a little will be a little on each side, as I understand it. I don't know. I've never been there. Uh, with... Bang Taylor, he is the everyday workout man. I think I'm going to get this number wrong, but I believe it is a 2,632-day workout challenge. Welcome to the show, Thane. Thank you. Yes, you got the number right. It's nice to be here. Did I? That's amazing. Yep. That's right. I was like, I am for sure going to fuck this up. And I, yep. I like dug it. deep. <laughs> it's because I worked it. out this morning. Did you work out this morning? I do. I usually do evenings. So normally, oh, okay. uh, it's like a little like 10-minute stretch yoga thing in the morning. And then usually like 10, 1030 at night, something like that. So after that's when you work out at 1030 at night. Yeah, usually, yeah. Oh yeah. man, no, I'm still, I'm usually still working then. I love to get up first thing in the morning and just bang out like an hour easy and yeah. then go about the rest of my day. And, and before, you know, before everything got shut down, I would usually do another one at night if possible. Um, yeah. I've never been a morning person. So, Oh man, I have no, nothing more to wake up and make a, like a couple of shots of espresso. Yeah. I mean, just like hit it. Boom. Right. And then, and then it's like, I can do whatever else I want. If I want to eat, you know, funnel cakes later in the day, I don't feel guilty. I'm like, oh, I worked out already. It's all right. yeah, 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 I get it. it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so tell everybody a little bit about yourself uh, in terms of your, we'll, we'll kind of split the sh the, this portion into two halves. The first half, we'll talk about your, your business background. You are uh, the owner of a mathnasium, mathnasium. I knew I was going to mess up yep. some pronunciation. Mathnasium yep. oh. franchise, correct? That's right. Oh, so yeah. give us, give us the, give us the story. So, um, Mathnasium in Fargo, it's the first one in North Dakota and, um, I'm the owner operator of it. Um, opened September of 2018. So a little, uh, coming up on two years now and it's great. I love it so far. Um, my background is actually in chemistry. So got a master's in chemistry. 
Um, I was on my way to pursue a PhD and I was teaching at the Evergreen State College in Olympia, Washington. It was great. Um, if I were to teach anywhere, that would be the type of setting that I would, I would do because it's just like all about education and just, just that's primary focus. And I love that part, part of it. Um, but I realized during my time there that um, the, the things that I wanted or I, I thought I wanted to do prior to that was um, teach at some big university. Um, but going along that career path, it would just be a lot more research intensive than I wanted. And I really wanted to just focus on education. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I just stopped doing that. Um, and the alternative to that was to, to go into industry, be in a lab setting. And I, I knew yeah. I didn't want to do that either. So um, took a little break from that. I invested in uh, my family business, which is uh, completely different than, you know, than, than chemistry is uh, actually a restaurant, Thai restaurant. And some There's a little chemistry in there. <laughs> a little bit. You can apply some. Um, but yeah, get that umami. <laughs> that's right. Oh, it's great. I'm actually growing some wasabi plants in my garden right now. So oh, like, nice. Awesome. Well. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I did that for a little while, and then uh, after a year or two, a couple years, I really wanted to, you know, find a way to get back into education. And and a uh, family friend of ours uh, had a mathnasium franchise in Mankato and really mentored me, took me under her wing and, and um, got the opportunity to open one up in, in Fargo and it's been great. That's awesome. And it, it focuses on uh, mainly school age children, correct? Yep, second grade through high school. Yep. So, um, um, just go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah, so basically what, um, you know, any, any kid, uh, that's going to school right now that is either struggling or wanting to, you know, get a little bit more of a challenge. They, uh, they contact us, we find out where they're at and see what fun foundational skills they could benefit from. And then we develop learning plans for them. They come in um, and then get instruction to see, you know, how we could maybe present the material in a way that makes sense and then kind of go from there. And, and you were mentioning to me yesterday that it, it is a brick and mortar location in Fargo, but you've had pretty much virtual since March. That's right. Correct? Exactly. Yeah. So up until March of this year, it's just been exclusively brick and mortar. So um, in-person instruction, we've got instructors that are you know excellent people. Um, we have our kids just, just come in for hour long sessions. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's really been a, a great thing, but then, um, you know, COVID restrictions has, have kind of forced us to change, you know, the way our business uh, runs. And luckily, as part of the franchise, they've been, um, Mathnasium has um, kind of been playing with uh, an online option for quite some time. It was uh, in development for, you know, mostly for people that are a little bit too far away from locations uh, mm -hmm. to get access to it because, you know, this one, for example, this one's the only one in North Dakota. So people in Bismarck, you know, or on the other side of North Dakota really don't have access to a mathnasium locations. Um, so that was in development, but it was set to roll out within, you know, another year or so. So they really had to amplify that and speed things up. <laughs> um, you know, throughout the nation, I think they had like 500 people um, in the country that were streaming at one time. And um, they had to boost that up to, have capacity to like uh, like 20,000 people at a time. Yeah. Um, so it's just, you know, that, that part was a little bit crazy, but I'm so grateful that they had that available to us. Um, so yeah, right now um, we did the, the past, you know, two months or so exclusively online. Now it's more of a hybrid thing. So uh, some online, some in person, and we've yeah. got restrictions in place to keep everything safe when, um, when we're in person. So it's, it's been pretty good. And is summertime usually a slow time for, for that business because kids are out of school or is it something that you, you all still see a pretty steady uh, flow because just the, the go-getters are the people that are you trying know, to get ahead? Right. So actually, um, let's see, June is usually a really, really big time. So start of the yeah. summer, because um, people don't want that. There's called a summer slide, right? So mm. if you you know, go from constant schooling to just basically nothing. You really yeah. see a dip in what you retain and, and um, your skill set. So we do see a pretty big increase in, in summer scheduling. So that's, that's great. Um, this year has been just off the walls crazy. because like, <laughs> I mean, the right. patterns that you expect is just, I Gone. have no idea what to expect. So yeah, yeah. Um, 
yeah, still trying to figure out the trends, local trends vary, you know, depending on what works for each, each location. But, um, yeah, we do see a bump in summer, one in, uh, you know, kind of back to school and then one around, uh, new year's when, yeah. you know, get the grades from the previous trends. So <laughs> He's sure. like, Billy, Billy, you got to step it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I was just doing spreadsheets last night for the restaurant and I was just looking at it and I'm like, why am I even bothering? Like there's, there's no, like, yeah, I usually put a lot of information in it just to like keep those trends up. And I was like, it's all gone. And then when we come back, it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be like 2018 again. You know, I mean, yeah. I guess it's good information to have, but like I used to kind of like harp on it. And now I'm just like, I'm just going to document. I'm not going to take it too seriously. Like the numbers are the most important thing. Exactly. Just, you know, is it's all it's all different i'm curious something that that was mentioned earlier just made me think about this because i know you know a good about about a good amount about um nutrition as it applies to fitness with your background in chemistry but also in in restaurants are you how familiar with with like uh amino acids particularly like glutamate are you are you familiar um, with that whole it's something i just started to like scratch the surface of you know it's funny i um my master's degree is actually in bioanalytical chemistry and what that is is like studies um you know molecular events using just kind of like cool lasers and things like that and, and um different approaches um but i didn't really take any uh you know i took intro biology and um mm. you know the required biochemistry courses but uh, honestly, how that stuff applies in in uh, you know regular day, I I it doesn't really interest me to be honest. So gotcha. I don't really pay attention to it. So just kind of do a, a somewhat uh, what I feel is a common sense approach to it, and that's kind of I kind of leave it at that. Um, but that's kind of my take on nutrition. I know it's some people really dig into it, but that's uh, that's really not for me, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah. And the interesting part about that is like, it's less about nutrition and more about um, like the whole idea behind umami, which is um, uh, it's, it's like a, a, a sensory thing, you know, where it, it, it uh, translates to the brain through, um, through amino acids and neurotransmitters in your tongue, but it's actually amino acids. Again, it's something I got a couple books earlier in the year about it. And I was just like, Whoa, I always just thought about amino acids. It's like, you know, building blocks for protein. It was something, you know, something my dad always uh, talked a lot about being a bodybuilder. Um, right. Then when I realized like it was attached to mental health and you could achieve it through food, I was like, Oh my God, like no wonder it, I love it. You're dabbling in gastro food things or what? Like uh, in terms of what like, do you mean uh, specifically? Around with, with uh, different types of fancy foams and, and things like that as applies to food food chemistry no no i like you just said i kind of keep it more on the simple um and and i i never i never try to get into too many processes that are not available just like completely naturally like if it's super overproduced and it wouldn't sure. be both widely available in the past or possibly in the future looking at the way things are going i don't spend too much time with it because i don't want to get i don't want to get too connected to something that's just not going to be around i always mm -hmm. search for things that are like tried and tuned and tested tr tested you know and true that that uh that that we could we could practice and and if there is some legacy to any of this like people down the road would be like oh okay this is something that was that's been done for a while like we can continue with it so i was just curious you know yeah. le less from the uh from the work outside but more from like the the chemistry and uh and and food side of things it's just something i dabbled in recently yeah. it's kind of blowing my mind a little bit um, cool. We're going to take a quick break and we come back. I want to talk about your everyday workout man challenge and give all of our listeners the, the lowdown Definitely. on like the, the load of this 2,632 days. Got to get it right again. That's right. Yep. <laughs> on a roll. I like that. <laughs> all right, cool. We'll be back in a, in a, just a minute. Everybody you're listening to the entrepreneurial web. Talking alternative radio 24 hours a day. Are you a curious person, always asking questions? Do you desire to be in the know? Then join me, Antonia, host of So Now You Know, Thursdays at 5 p.m. at talkradio.nyc. Listen in as I attempt to satisfy that curiosity. 
I will be talking with amazing everyday people. Join the fun. So now you know on Thursdays at 5 p.m. at talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. TalkingAlternative.com Okay, everybody, welcome back. Last portion of the show. Once again, we are doing a focus here on the focus that you get from fitness and how it applies to your business acumen, your business lifestyle, your business approach. Right now, we are zooming in to Fargo, North Dakota with Thane Taylor. He is a franchise owner in Mathnasium. He has a chemistry background, also some investment time in restaurants, but he has this crazy workout challenge called the everyday workout man it is a 2632 day workout challenge did i get it right again again i, I, yep, I, I got this one committed to memory man if i mess this up ever again i'm useless so tell us about this challenge because this is this is like i've never heard of anything like this i've heard some crazy like it's like i you know get your black belt like sure that's like an eight-year thing but there's like you can exactly. take like time off. What, what is up with this like two thousand day sure. challenge? It's every yeah, day, so, right? Every day, yeah. So um, let's see. I started this back in September of two thousand sixteen. Uh, so right now, today is going to be day thirteen eighty three, um, I believe. So um, you know, so you're just the, over halfway. Yeah, a little, little over halfway. The whole thing is seven point two one years. Um, so the reason I got into it is because prior to the challenge. Um, I, you know, I'd always been kind of an active person. So, you know, I, I did wrestling and, uh, and some soccer growing up, um, you know, but after that in the grad school and afterwards, um, I was still working out, but, you know, um, sometimes, uh, you know, there'd be times when I would just like not be super intentional about it. Mm -hmm. And then I would just get like a little bit, not super confident. And then I get cranky and, you know, and irritable. So, um, I decided I'd just be done with that phase. So I was like, okay. I, you know, it's better for me to kind of constantly be in a state of, of fitness. I feel right now, I feel really good uh, and confident about my body. It does what I want or what I want it to do. And um, I'm healthy. So I, I really want to maintain that level of, of, of activity and being fit. So, you know, the 30, 60, 90 day challenges is basically like, you know, if you sprint and then you stop and then I really don't want to like have that stopping Thing because that yeah. just, like ruins everything for me and then you got to build up the inertia again um so i decided to take it you know another level and then go 2000 or like or like five <laughs> <laughs> so, do you know what the significance of that uh that number is no that was going to be my next question oh sure um so i was looking at like just streaks throughout history that were like very 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 impressive mm -hmm. um so then uh you know brett Favre comes to mind you know, other sports people come to mind, but Cal Ripken Jr., that's his consecutive games played streak. So gotcha. um, I figure if that gets him in the Hall of Fame, something like that has got to do, you know, something good for me, right? Um, so <laughs> have you have you talked to Cal about this? Does he know this? I, I haven't. I don't think he doesn't man. know about it. So this could be like it, they got, it's a, that's a tweet right there, man. <laughs> so Dane and I connected through Twitter. That's how this whole thing happened. Again, I've never been to North Dakota. I don't know. Have you ever been to New York? <laughs> I've been, yeah. My sister is a is a OBGYN in New York, and I. Oh, been, cool! Yeah, nice. At, at a hospital, or does she have a? Yeah, she one of clinic? She's got a. Yeah. Uh, I forget which one it is, but yeah, she's. Oh, cool. She's, have you been to? Uh, have you ever been to MoMath, the MoMath Museum? 
So my, I mentioned to you, my wife is a math director at a, at a high school here in, in, in Manhattan. And it's a, it's an extension of, uh, the MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art. And they, it's right near, um, Gramercy Park or Herald Square. It's a, it's a, it's a math, math museum. Like that's what came to mind when you were like, how in the mathnasium? And I was like, is that like MoMA? You might enjoy that. I, I go there and I'm like, oh. I want to wrestle. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, if I'm if I'm back in uh, in New York anytime, I'll I'll be sure to touch base. Yeah, It'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You should check it out. So, um, yeah, I think you should tweet that and and tag Cal and see uh, see if you don't get a little a little bump from that because that's a, that's an honor. And I'm sure you know he's an agent dude. I mean, it probably, people probably aren't talking about him as much as they yeah. were like when we were kids when when he was the man. <laughs> yeah, leave it to me to make Cal Rep, Cal Ripken relevant again, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's amazing. That's amazing. Wow. So you really you set the bar high. So that I, that seems like one. <laughs> one of the benefits and another thing you said that really stuck out to me just then was the intent you were like there's there's a certain level of intent behind or lack of when you're doing the shorter challenges but like the intent behind like a huge challenge like this and the same is true of uh, of like getting your black belt in brazilian jiu-jitsu and they're constantly talking about your intent like why are you doing what you're doing does does it lend itself to the long you know to the marathon or is it more of a sprint based thing? Like, so yeah. like just being reflective and, and uh, thinking about your actions. Another thing that you do constantly is you post videos of your, your movements, of your drills, of your workouts. And there's a lot of benefit you personally get from that, right? Just the analyzation of exactly. seeing your own videos. So you want to talk about that for a minute? Yeah, sure. Um, so I just started that p- portion of it um, relatively recently within the past okay. couple months. Uh, you know, because I'm kind of more extroverted. Uh, a, a thing that I do is is do Facebook Live videos in my workouts, and um, no, that okay. yeah, because mm-hmm. um, it kind of gives me like a pseudo workout partner. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I, I basically talk to the camera like somebody's watching. Sometimes people stop in and and actually comment and stuff, but um, mostly it's for my benefit. And afterwards, what I do is analyze that video a little bit. Um, you know, not not super in depth, but then you know, if I look at um, the squats and it's a little bit off or the deadlifts, the, you know, the, the back form and kettlebell swings, um, documenting things and then being able to take a look at that and then, you know, do little minor tweaks here and there. Um, Twitter has been great for sharing that because uh, so many people have just such amazing insight into, um, Mm -hmm. you know, minor things you can do to improve or, you know, why don't you do this? That it'll help with grip strength or, um, there's so much, so much like free knowledge out there. It's uh, amazing. Yeah, I've enjoyed them as well. And and the thing I like the most about them is your your lack of ego in it, where you'll say, like, you, your captions are like, hey, what do you guys think about this? Or like, how can I improve this? Like, this feels like this. Anybody know anything about that? Where you're not like, you know, like, look at me. Right. You know? right. Like, look at my great form. It, it's, it's, you, 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 it's very humble. And, and I appreciate that about it. Um, although that concrete ball you were throwing around <laughs> a concrete ball. I've got some big plan, big things planned for that. So <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's right now it's, it's curing. So I've got a couple more days. Yeah. I'm going to paint it. I've got a nice paint job planned out for that. And I've got a couple more coming out. So, you know what it reminded me of when I used to make pizza, I was a pizza man. It's like, okay. exa- it's how I like, you know, woo my wife. She came into my restaurant and I was like tossing pizzas up in the front. It was hilarious. Mm-hmm. But when we would make the huge things of dough, you just would like grab it out. And it was that same kind of motion. And you just, oh, but it was like, <laughs> you know, amorphous. It's like going all over the place. And you had to get up on the, get it up on the dough rolling table. And, you know, that was like always higher. And this, I was like 18 at the time. I think I weighed like 125 pounds and I'm like wrestling with this thing, but it was always the challenge. Like it was like your, your, you know, your, your sign of manhood. Like you could actually get the dough ball up exactly. without yeah. pulling the, you know, the whole <laughs> basket and everything out. It just reminded me of that it was pretty funny. So um, before we wrap up here, can you give a couple examples of, we discussed, a, um, you know, mentioned a couple things, but how, how has this challenge helped you on, on the business side of things, what has it done? What are what are like one or two benefits you've gotten from putting this challenge up in front of yourself and then actually following through with it every day? Sure. Um, yeah. So there's a level of co- accountability to doing this, and mm-hmm. and one thing that I think applies to everything in life is 
to be accountable and hold yourself accountable to absolutely, absolutely everything. If you can control something and you want it, you want it to change, there's no point in dwelling on it or being cranky about it. Just do it. Right. Um, a couple of things that also apply is that um, I've been kind of building this into other facets of my life. So like um, if you want to do something, find a program and then, you know, be intentional about it. If it doesn't work, adjust and then keep going. And that's, that's basically it. Progressive improvement is also one other huge thing. You apply that to everything. Um, don't just go through the motions, try mm -hmm. to continuously get better. And if you do that, um, you know, the program, progressive improvement, be intentional about it, it's going to go a really, really long way. It's, it's kind of, you know, seeped into every aspect of my life. So that's been, that's been pretty cool. That's awesome. That's very jujitsu. I'm telling you, man, there's a dojo out there just waiting for you. Yeah. Because okay. <laughs> like all of your posts, everything you say, it's just, I'm like, I find jujitsu in it and you wrestled. Yeah. You're, it's, it's the natural progression. I, you know, I'm, I, there's one in, in, uh, by my hometown. It's, it's, I really like the idea of it. That's kind of the next step. Yeah. Just yeah. Find, uh, find a way to get into there. So yeah, I, yeah. I've got a, I've got a, um, a gi on and everything. Oh yeah. So oh, you're ready, man. You're ready. You should do it. Take the plunge. Let me know when you do. I'd love to hear Definitely. about it. Definitely. So before we wrap up here, we got about one minute left. Where can people find out information about your workout challenge, about your, about your school, about anything? Sure. Um, so I document everything uh, for my workout challenge, www.everydayworkoutman.com. Uh, mo most active on Twitter. So E day or at E day workout man. And um, if, with regards to uh, the mathnasium, it's, uh, let's see, mathnasium.com slash Fargo. <laughs> yeah. So uh, two, um, six, three, two. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's all I got in my mind. So. <laughs> yeah, again, everydayworkonman.com is basically where I document everything and, and have all my social links up and everything. So, and it, But you're also on Facebook and Instagram with that as well. Exactly. Yep, that's right. All right. So jujitsu and LinkedIn, those are your new frontiers. <laughs> those are my new things. Okay, I'll put it on the list. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thank you so much. It was really great to connect. And definitely, if you make your way to New York, hit me up and I look forward to keeping up with everything, especially on Twitter. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hey. My pleasure. All right, everybody. I hope you got some really good information from this. Stay active. Stay sharp. Go get it done. Have a great weekend. You're listening to The Entrepreneurial Web. Peace. Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. Do you run or are ready to open your own business? Hi, I'm Jeremiah Fox. I've been operating and opening small business for the last 25 years, and I'm the host of the new show, The Entrepreneurial Web. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern time for insights and stories on the nuances of running small business right here on Fridays at noon, talkradio.nyc. Hi, I'm Graham Dobbin. Join me every Thursday evening for the Mind Behind Leadership here on talkradio.nyc. We speak to people from business, sport, military and politics, all around what makes a great leader. The personal experiences of what's worked and, maybe more importantly, what hasn't worked. So, that's 7 o'clock every Thursday evening. The Mind Behind Leadership here on talkradio.nyc. Listen to real stories of real leaders. Hey, all you crazy listeners. Looking to boost your business? Why not advertise on Talking Alternative with very reasonable rates? Interested? Simply email at info at talkingalternative.com. Are you a curious person always asking questions? Do you desire to be in the know? Then join me, Antonia, host of So Now You Know, Thursdays at 5 p.m. at talkradio.nyc. Listen in as I attempt to satisfy that curiosity. I will be talking with amazing everyday people. Join the fun. So now you know on Thursdays at 5 p.m. at talkradio.nyc. 
You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network at www.talkingalternative.com. Now, broadcasting 24 hours a day. Talking Alternative. Do you love or are you intrigued about New York City and its neighborhoods? I'm Jeff Goodman, host of Rediscovering New York, a weekly show that showcases New York's history and its extraordinary neighborhoods. Every Tuesday live at 7 p.m., we focus on a particular neighborhood and explore its history, its vibe, its feel, and its energy. Tune in live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. 